Church family, it's uh, been a wonderful few weeks as we've been looking at Reach 24. Um, we are slowly approaching the end, and next week is the finale uh, where I'm going to be bringing a word. And as I mentioned earlier, after this next announcement, I'm going to be bringing a taster of that word uh, with a small teaching that I feel the Lord's laid on my heart. But before we do so, I want to continue to look at how God's calling us to extend our reach. And it's worth saying that extending our reach is rooted in the mission of the church globally, which is to make disciples of every nation. Uh, that is the business that the church is in. The business of the church is not to have a party and, and close the doors and have entertainment. The, the purpose of the church is to be outward focus and making, uh, nation, uh, making disciples in every nation. And that's why we have been launching our sites. As way of a recap, of course, we have Verso Hatfield, Verso Mount. Uh, we announced Verso Central, uh, which is very exciting a couple of weeks ago that we're looking to uh, launch in the center of St. Albans. Uh, last week, we looked at the hand in the baton over of James and Catherine Barringer from uh, Hemel Vineyard to Pritt and Tea as we launch in, uh, in September, Verso Hemel. But I'd like to announce to you um, the final site that we're going to be launching this year. And I'm pleased to say we are going to be launching Verso Luton. Um, it is so exciting what God is doing in us as a, as a body of believers, and, and I'm really excited now to introduce our new site pastor. Do you want to meet them? Yeah. Well, why don't we do it? Fred and Elizabeth Badeau, why don't you come up? <clears throat> come on up, guys. Wonderful. Yes. Please grab a stool each. Bless you, brother and sister. The moment is here. How good is this? Wow. Well, listen, many of you will know um, Fred and Elizabeth. Fred is on our um, worship team. Elizabeth serves in lots of different teams. There we go. We'll get there. Thank I can you. multitask, it seems, just. Um, but for the benefit of everyone else, and we have got people on the side, so we're going to be peering over as well. Would you just let everyone know who you are? Uh, um, yes, that would be wonderful. Okay. Well, hi, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. As you know, that my name's Fred, and this is my wife, Elizabeth. Hi. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, we have uh, three beautiful kids, um, Daisha, Sophia, and Fred Jr. And, and Piggy. Uh, Oh, yes. Yeah, we were oh, told. Oh, wow. We were yes. mentioned three times in the car. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What's this? Jun Junior has his uh, soft toy, which is called Piggy. And oh. so he's a part of our family. Hey, so absolutely. So, so, so Piggy is Piggy, well. we, yes. we love Piggy. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully he'll make an appearance at Verso Luton. <laughs> yes, yes, he will. Oh, yeah, you'll see him be, be flung about somewhere. Yeah, so just, good. <laughs> you'll, you'll get to meet him. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, and so... Um, that's our family, and uh, we've been here for about, what is it now, six years? Yeah. Six years yeah. now, so yeah. 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 Time flies when you're having fun, hey? Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. So, yeah. listen, we've obviously had much opportunity to talk, but maybe just briefly talk about the journey and why we got to this point. Okay. I'll let you go there. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Um, well, we have been in ministry before we came here for over 10 years um, in a different church. And we were led to sit down and just rest for a little bit, which we did here in Verso. And um, we were resting and um, enjoying life. And then God was like, well, we want you to go back out. <laughs> we're like, okay. So um, we've been very um, obedient to what God wants us to do. Um, he first led us to do something called Deep Impact um, Worship in yeah. Luton. Ooh, ooh. Uh, of which, I under, you know, there's about 80 or so go every month, many of you here. Just an amazing gathering opportunity, creating a space for people to encounter Jesus. That's right, that's yeah. right. So God was very particular with that first. Yeah. He wanted us to do some more things in Luton, that's where we live. Um, so we started doing Deep Impact first, and it's just been absolutely amazing. It's aimed at people um, who may be not comfortable to go to church, but just love Jesus and want to be around other people. And all the people that are also in leadership, that just want to sit mm. just with Christ and be with him, and just non-interruptions two hours of non-stop worship, song worship. So that's what we were called to do when we've been doing that. And then um, God said, and 
you know, there, there needs a place for people to go. So when people are ready to go back into church, yeah. We wanted to be a, one of the churches that they can potentially go and receive Jesus as well. And what other place can they receive in a Verso church? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Really. I yeah. love that. Yeah. You know, I'll just say, like, coming here for the first time, uh, that six years ago, um, I, I remember coming in here and um, just thinking, okay, I'm just going to come in here just to uh, just receive a word and everything like that. And... Then I got introduced to, obviously, a, a powerful word, but I got introduced to the, the vineyard um, concept of everybody gets to play. <laughs> and so it was a situation where everybody stood up and uh, they were told by a person ministering that, okay, we're all going to pray for each other. And so I'm thinking, okay, I'm about to get my ministry hat on and start praying for people and, and so, but then I just got the Lord saying to me, you're not praying for nobody, sit down. <laughs> and so I sat down, kept quiet, and about three or four people came, surrounded me, and prayed for me, and everything that they prayed was exactly what I was going through, Thank you, exactly Lord. what I needed, and I was like, okay, God, you're in this place. <laughs> you are definitely in this place. Mm -hmm. And so it's such a blessing to be able to come here, bring the, my family, and to see that our kids could come in here as well and just be connected as well and just feel so welcomed. And so, you know, we just had a time. I even remember um, it was a time where we had a prayer meeting here and, uh, and you were leading. You were leading and, um, and the Lord uh, spoke to you. The Lord spoke to you and um, was, was saying that you should, to, to myself, you came to me and you said, okay, well, I think it's time for you to, to, make, to make the decision. Hmm. And yeah, and the Lord spoke to me, was like, yeah, this is the time for you to come here. Wow. So, yeah. That is amazing. I just love how you guys are just so receptive to the Lord, though. You listen to the Lord. I think it's an encouragement for all of us. You know, God speaks. It's not that God doesn't speak. It's oftentimes that we don't listen. <laughs> and I love how you guys model that. So uh, we're planning to launch Verso Luton Ooh. in September, yeah. which is really exciting. Lots yeah. is going to be happening until then. But can you just give us a bit of a, a sense of what we can expect from Verso Luton? What has the Lord laid on your heart for Verso Luton? Well, one thing that I will say is that the goal and the plan is that whatever you see here, whatever you see in this place, that is what you are going to see in Verso Luton. It's going to be definitely an extension to what is going on here. You know, God has really uh, put it on our heart to, to really be a place where people are going to be educated and equipped with the word and definitely going to experience the the kingdom culture, you know, the, the kingdom of God culture, you know, ultimately, you know, the scripture speaks about that, the, that we have been transferred into the kingdom of his dear son, which is Jesus. This is really the kingdom of Jesus, and it's a kingdom of love. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we really want to put out is to get across the kingdom culture. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be working on... Um, being uh, culturally intelligent in regards to just adapting because so many cultures are within the Luton area. Mm, that's right. There's so that's many right. different cultures. Yeah. And, but also there's so many different uh, challenges. You know, whenever you, if you look up Luton on, online and stuff, you know, it's funny. Um, shout out to Prit and T. Uh, <laughs> you know, they were, they were talking about last week about Hemel and, and, and the meaning of it and stuff. And so I thought, okay, let me check it out. And <laughs> let me check out what Luton means. Not and quite so, the same. <laughs> not quite the same. Not quite the same. If you're wondering, you missed last week, Hemel means heaven. So yeah. Yeah. that's pretty tough yeah, to so, beat, so, right? Yeah, I mean, so, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so Luton meant farm. <laughs> <laughs> meant what? Farm. 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 That that's farm perfect. Farm of A farm of Luton. Come, yeah. yeah. But exactly, yeah. you, you, can you can you see the the, the spiritual yeah. connection? That yeah, is there? yeah. So many parables of the kingdom connected with Love farming. 
<laughs> the brother's preaching already. This is good. This is good. We need oh, to get you a pulpit get in Luton. Started. Don't so. get me started. Don't get me started. <laughs> I think ultimately, don't we? We want to serve Luton. We want to serve the people of Luton and show God's love. Ultimately, it's just all about Jesus. Yeah. And it's all about us serving people in bringing the love of Jesus to Luton. Because there's a lot, like, like you said, babe, there's lots of people that have been, um, it means farm or whatever it may be, and they don't always speak positively about Luton. Um, they, they, um, I went to, we met someone last summer and they said, oh, Luton, you live in Luton. I went there and it felt dark, is what they were saying. They said they just felt the spirit of darkness there. And that's not to say, um, uh, well, that was just their opinion, you know, but Fred, you had a different oh, vision. Yeah, yeah. But, and, and that's not just the only person. I've, I've experienced that with, with quite a few people saying that, oh, there's, there seems to be a darkness there. But, but the Lord just put it on my heart that there's no darkness, but there's a brokenness that's there. Mm. And, and we are here to be the hands that mend that, right. that brokenness, that's right. definitely. That's right. And so... Yeah. And be the light, right? Yeah, we want to be the definitely. light in the darkness. Yeah. And, yeah. um, and you know what, I, we live in Luton and it's a beautiful place to live. We do love living there and we do love serving God's people there and we just want to be extension. So all the love that we are able to give to the, you know, this area, the St. Albans, we wanted to be able to bring that to Luton and the surrounding areas because, you know, just like all of us, we've been lost at some point yeah. and now we see the light, now we need to shine that light onto other people. That should be our aim. I Amen. love that. Well... We're going to have um, much more opportunity to hear from you guys. In fact, we get this slide on the screen here. We've got a Q&A evening coming up with you guys. Uh, it's going to be on Thursday, uh, May the 16th. Come along, 8 to 9.30 It's going to be here. If you uh, feel like you want to be part of this, maybe it's just to pray. You're like, well, I don't live in Luton. I don't feel called to Luton, but I want to support you guys in prayer. Come along. Uh, maybe you live in the area or the surrounding area, and you think, well, maybe God's calling me to extend my reach and extend myself to save the lost, then, you know, we've got a map here. Can we just get that map up? This is a map of our area. I showed you Hemel last time. Um, there's no circle on that one. It's missed. But if you look up there, where it's got near Tonnington, just slightly on the right, that's the Luton area. We have a lot of people in our church that live in that area. And maybe that's you. Maybe that's you online. And I just want to ask you, like I did with people in Hemel, just say, Lord, are you calling me? You know, it's not about... The people at the front on the stage get to do this, but everyone gets to do this. And are you called to go and launch with these guys at that site? So if you're interested, interested, then do come along to that Q&A evening that will be on that Thursday. Guys, we'd love to pray with you. I'm going to invite a couple of people to pray with us. Um, Steph, can you come up? Edward, would you mind just joining us? Um, we're going to pray for these guys. Um, Wonderful. Why don't we all stand, church, and just extend a hand out as we pray. We're going to commission these guys later in the year before we launch um, Verso Luton, but we just want to pray a blessing on them now. So I'll take that off you. You come forward here. Wonderful. Let's just pray. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this incredible couple mm. who you have brought here for a reason. They've journeyed with us and they will continue to journey with us just in an increased and different capacity. Mm. Well, thank you for that word really early on that Fred received, just acknowledging the need to rest and affirming the need to be here. And thank you for those six years of being invested into and growing connections with us as a church family. And Father, I ask that in this next step, in those three, four months ahead, as planning, as coordinating, as team growing takes place, you would bring along those people to stand alongside them in this exciting new endeavor. Mm. Lord, thank you for that word, farm. Mm. Thank you that seeds will be sown, that crops will grow, and yes. there will be a harvest. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the good plans you have for Luton to increase your presence there and to increase your name's acknowledgement in that town. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. First of all, I want to thank the Lord for um, his favour upon you both. And I see that in this church, the favour that you have amongst his people. Mm. And how they just, we, people just delight in being in your presence. Um, there's something quite captivating by you both. 
which I just want to thank the Lord for and just affirm you both in the, that, um, that favour and that anointing upon you both. I was asking the Lord for a word for you and um, he took me to Isaiah 55 where it says, is anyone thirsty? Come and drink. Even if you have no money, come take your choice of wine or milk. It is all free. And I thought, yes, Lord, that is so, so right for you both. Just that sense, and you talked earlier about, you know, there's so many broke, there's a sense of brokenness in Luton. And, um, and I think also financially, but, you know, that spiritual brokenness and grief and pain. And that verse is so right in the sense people are going to come and they're going to know it's free. There's no cost to come into your presence and to come into the church. And that's the anointing that's going to be upon you both, this sense that people are going to just come freely and they're going to receive such choice milk and honey and wine. And so, Father, I want to thank you for that, Lord, for that truth. And, Lord, I just reminded as well of the, the farm. Immediately when you said farm, I thought of animals being birthed, especially where in spring, you know, and if you go to big farms, it's quite amazing to see lambs being born. But new life, I just had a sense the Lord was saying, yeah, farm is a place of new life and birth. So, Father, I want to thank you for the new life and birth that is going to be upon this couple and in the Luton area, Father. And, God, we thank you they're going to break through that brokenness and that darkness, Lord, and they're going to bring your glorious light. And we're going to see new life and birth and hope in that place. Mm. We thank you for them. And we pray you bless them and we honour them, Jesus, for all that they are. And all that they're saying yes to do in your name, in Jesus' name. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we just pray a blessing upon you guys as you respond to the call Jesus. that God has laid on your heart. We pray a blessing upon you and your children, that you would hear the voice of the Lord so clearly, and that as your heart melts for what melts his heart, that he would equip you to walk in all that he has for you. We pray that, you, that the Lord would bring the right people alongside you as, as we start to build team people that are called, that have the vision, that are captured by that calling to bring the love of God into that area and to bring his healing into a place of brokenness. So we just pray your blessing and anointing upon you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. God bless you guys. Bless you, brother. So good. Okay. Wonderful. That's okay. I'll take these. I'm going to transition. Exciting, isn't it? Uh, I mean, the Lord is moving in our midst and God is calling us to be good stewards of his grace as we uh, look. Thank you very much, Edward. Um, and may I have my glass under my chair as well over there, which would be great. Thank you very much. Um, as I said to you guys earlier, I wanted to um, provide uh, an introduction, thank you, to um, a teaching that I'm going to be giving next week as we end our REACH series. And the Lord impressed upon my heart um, to preach on Romans 6. Uh, Romans 6, I mean, the book of Romans is just an amazing book. Such wonderful truths as the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Rome. And the Lord brought me to uh, Romans 6, as I said, and I want to zoom into uh, verse 13, which, as I said to you earlier, is going to um, provide an introduction to uh, next week's um, close of Reach 24. And I want to say the week after, we're going to be starting a brand new series entitled Power and Presence. Uh, power and Presence. Although it might be Presence and Power. I can't remember which way it's around. Eddie's going to put the slide up on the screen in a moment and we can see which way it is. But we're going to be starting, there we go, Power and Presence. I was right the first time. Uh, I really am excited about this new series. There'll be many speakers, including myself, who'll be uh, speaking on this as we press into uh, seeking his presence and his power in this place. So don't miss that. So I'd like to turn together to Romans 6, verse 13. Um, and I'm going to read this. It's going to be on the screen. If you're in the room, if you're online, it'll be on your device. Paul says this, Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God. He says, for you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. What does Paul mean when he says, for you were dead, but now you have life? Well, of course, the preceding verses of 13 open that up to us. And Paul is making the point that he said, listen, if you're a believer, what's happened is, is that you have died with Christ. When he was on that cross, 
And he died and paid the penalty of sin. You died in that moment with him. That old flesh, that old sinful nature. And we looked at that in the gospel series, that we are born into separation of God. We're born into that sin nature. It says that sin nature has died. You're no longer uh, dead, but you are now alive with Christ. And he says, you know, the life that Christ now lives, that resurrected life is a promise for you and I. Did you know that? Jesus has gone before us, Jesus was raised, and we will be raised, resurrected with new resurrection bodies. I mean, that deserves an amen right there. And so Paul's saying, listen, because of that reality, because of the truth that you are no longer a bondage to sin, you have a choice to make. You have a choice to make. Listen, as your pastor, and it is my privilege to to do so, I have a concern for your spiritual walk. That, that doesn't mean that I wake up and I'm really worried about you. It means that as your pastor, my role, the, 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 if you like, the burden that the Lord has graciously laid on my heart is for you and for you walking in the fullness that God has for you. And so this message is a message to say, listen, how's your walk going with the Lord? Because if you're a believer in Christ, You are no longer dead to sin. You have a choice to make. What is this choice? Well, you see, the world would tell us that being without God means you have freedom, right? Being without God and following his truth and his ways means you are free. Well, I mean, I've got to say, that's just a lie from the pit of hell right there. Because the truth is, the opposite is true. You see, without Christ, being apart from God means that you are in bondage to sin, right? And so what Paul is saying here is, listen, you don't, you don't longer need to be in bondage to sin because you've died with Christ. That sin nature is gone. And you see, what happens is you are truly free when you are alive with Christ because you're no longer in bondage to sin, If you want true freedom, you say yes and amen to Christ. I want to do that that which you've called me to do. If you want to live the life that God has called you to live in the gifts that he's placed on you, in freedom, then you say yes to him. Running away from God means the opposite is true. Are you with me? So let me just unpack a question that you may have. And as I said, this is going to be a short talk to whet one's appetite for next week. But why do we fall into sin then, Mark? Uh, you know, if, if Paul's saying we're dead to sin, why do I sin? Well, that's a very good question. Whilst we are a new creation in Christ Jesus, we have the Spirit of God in us that causes us to be adopted into the family, we still have the old flesh. We read in the Bible that we experience what we call fleshly desires, those things that we know are not right. Paul himself said that the things he wants to do, he doesn't do, and the things that he doesn't want to do, he does. That's quite a mouthful. Romans 7, he's saying, listen, this is the battle. Because we live in a fallen world, we've got the enemy and we've still got the old flesh and the flesh wants us to fulfill those desires. And so when we become a Christian, we have a choice set before us, Christians. It's like being, let me use this as a picture to help us understand what I'm saying. It's like we're in a prison cell and we've been convicted. We're we're born in this prison cell it's like born into that sinful nature and the door is locked and we have a, 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 something on the wall that says you've been convicted. Jesus comes along and he dies for you and you say yes to Jesus and they exonerate you and they rip off that thing, you're not convicted and they open the door and say you're free. You see, when Jesus died, you are justified just if I'd died on that cross. You are made holy in his sight but the flesh wants to keep you in that prison cell. So you're gonna start, stay sitting in the cell in sin? Or you're gonna say, well, hold on a minute. I don't need to be here. I'm no longer a convict. The door's open. I'm gonna walk in the freedom that God has for me. That is what Paul is saying, that he's given us a choice. God is saying, listen, you don't need to stay in that cell anymore. I mean, like when Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, he meant it. It's all done. As Paul is saying, you've got a choice. You know, it says in Galatians 5, 16 to 18, 
Then I say, this I say then, walk in the spirit. In other words, walk out that door and walk in the spirit of God and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's that battle that we feel. You know what that battle is like. When it's late and everyone's in bed and the TV remote's there and you think, mm, should I watch that or not? Or when you've had a couple of drinks and you feel like, mm, maybe I should have some more, I'm having so much fun. Or when someone says something about someone that you've got an issue with and you just feel like you want to just, there's a not, you know what I mean. Yeah, those are what we're talking about, those fleshly things. And Paul is saying to the, to, in Galatians, you know, listen, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit. In other words, there's almost like this battle, this tension that Paul was talking about. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you are led of the spirit, you are not under the law. In other words, you're no longer sentenced as a convict. Okay, this is the reality of our lives. But rather than just sit back and say, well, this is a reality, it is what it is, Paul is saying here, you have a choice. The Christian walk isn't a passive walk. It's a walk of decisions and then being empowered by the Holy Spirit as we say, I can't do this on my own, God, so you're gonna have to help me, but I make a decision to walk in it. That's the Christian walk. It's not a, it's not a walk of performance based on how good and strong you are. It's based on how you're willing to surrender to him and say, I make this decision, would you help me, Lord? You know, in the ESV, when I read Romans 6.13, I, I love how it says, it renders this scripture because it actually says this. It says, uh, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. body. It says, do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, your members. What does that mean? I love it. It means your hands, your feet, it means your mouth and your ears, your members of your body. Isn't that interesting, that language? Because we're all members of one body, member of Christ. I love this. Is your mouth being used to praise God, to build one another up, to speak peace and blessings into people's lives? Or is it being used to curse God, to cut people down, and to speak negative words over people? What's your member doing? Acts of righteousness or acts of unrighteousness? Are your hands, what are your hands up to? I mean, are they being used to serve God in his house? To bring comfort to those around you? To work as if God is your boss? To help extend a hand of friendship? Is that what your member's up to? Or are they being used to take and never give? To work in the dark secrets of iniquity? Because we have a choice you know, Jesus talked about this on the Temple of the Mount. And he said this, if your eye causes you to sin, what did he say? Pluck it out. I mean, that's fairly radical. How do you, how do you, what do you do with that? Well, it's not literal. Jesus was being so radical as to make the point and say, listen, this is how bad sin is. This is the point Jesus is making here. Sin is that bad that you should be willing to pluck out your eye because of it. My question is, do we treat sin that bad? I don't think I always do. Ah, oh, it's all right. No one's seen. God doesn't mind. God knows. It's been a tough time. God knows it's okay. Well, I know his word says this, but I feel like he's saying this to me. Slippery side. <laughs> But if Jesus said, listen, if, you, if that thing's calling you to sin, pluck your eye out, he's saying it's very, very serious. And also Jesus is saying the second thing is that you need a radical approach to sin. And it's even more radical than plucking out your eye. It's about surrendering your heart to him. That's what Jesus is saying in the Sermon on the Mount. And brothers and sisters, and I'm preaching this to me as much as I am to you. But you see, the question that lies before each one of us is how is God going to use us? Uh, are you gonna be an instrument that's played for evil with discord and for works of unrighteousness? Or are you gonna be played as an instrument 
of the Lord for beautiful harmonies and melodies for him. You know, we have had an opportunity to sit with men and women like today and the previous weeks who have made a choice to use their members for righteousness. What are you going to use your members for? I'm not suggesting that all of you here are sight pastors, although maybe you are. Maybe you're not called to, quote, full-time ministry, but you've got a ministry wherever you are. Are you using your members in your workplace to extend out a hand of friendship or a hand of blessing? Are you using your member of your mouth to speak kindness and love and the peace of Christ into a situation at your home? Are you making the decision to use your eyes to gaze upon things that are righteous and true and good, as the Apostle Paul says in the book of the Philippians? Or are you using your eyes to look on things that are evil and that Jesus actually died on the cross for? This is a strong word, but you see, it's a word of freedom. Because the good news is this, you don't need to stay in that prison cell. You've been set free. And you see, reach isn't just us sitting back saying, man, I'm glad they're doing what they're doing. Reach is about each one of us asking ourselves the question, how, Lord, can you use me to create a space for people wherever I am? I've got to be honest. We, you know, you can start right here in church. Next week, we're going to look at Ventureland briefly. I'm going to talk about how we need Many more people to serve in Ventureland. I mean, that's a great place to use your members for righteousness. Like this, let's start with the family of God, hey? If we can't do it well in the family, how are we gonna do it well outside? I mean, Jesus, did, did he not say, that the world would know that you're mine by the way you love one another. Are we using our members in this place to love one another? Are we making sure that we're serving? Are we making sure that we're saying, you know, I just feel the Lord is saying, just pray a blessing on you. You don't have to wait for my right, your left to do that. You can do that where you are. With that, the time has hit 11 o'clock. That is a taster for what I believe the Lord wants me to open up next week. And so with that, could I ask us all to stand, please, church, because I want to pray.